Hey there, listeners. I'm Tom. And I'm James. And you're listening to World on a Stream. Oh my god. Episode 9. Wow. We're exceptionally close to our episode 10 extravaganza. Extra bonanza s- special, extravaganza <laughs> bonanza special. <laughs> I was, I had an idea, James. Actually, yeah. for a possible thing, not not specifically for episode ten, Ooh. but just a possible thing that we could add to the podcast, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that we could every month mm-hmm. release a bonus episode, where over the month we've both watched a season or a series of a TV show. And we talk oh. about the series or season, ju- and it's just the TV show in that episode, because a week isn't enough time to watch a TV show. I don't have the time to watch a whole series or a whole TV show every week. No, 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 no. But I feel like a month, we could do it. Yeah, yeah. Let's. We have the technology. <laughs> I'm I'm glad we have the technology. Um, yeah, let's do it. I like that idea. Because I like TV shows more than films. <laughs> yeah, so I'll gladly do that. When are we going to do that? When's our first one going to be out? Uh, I was thinking we could pick one next week and then watch one throughout August. Yeah, good idea. Or maybe even pick one this week, because that August, it will be or the 1st of August, won't it? Yeah. Um, When we next record, probably. Wednesday, let me check. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it is. Yeah, next Wednesday is the 1st of August. Oh my so, god! I guess I guess we might as well pick one next Wednesday then, because that yeah. is the first of August, episode ten. Right. We'll pick a. Wow, that is pick the one and then watch special. it. Talk about it on the 29th of August. Yeah. Okay. To be released on the 31st. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Holy shit! You're coming up with so many good ideas. Already, we're two minutes in. Well, I feel like it's quite good, you know. We've we've got them. No, we've got the music. We've got the film. We've got the TV. Yeah. And every year or every season, <laughs> we read a book. Oh. <laughs> every three months. I think I've actually forgotten how to read, so that's going to be a problem. We could like <laughs> expand it even further. We could do like then every four years we do our own Olympics, just the two of us. We have to go out and do like <laughs> we have to like do, we each pick a country. It changes every four years, and then we we do sports against each other, and and we do stuff. I don't think I'd be very good at that. <laughs> yeah, but it'd be fun and definitely suitable for a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> Olympics are definitely the most radio friendly of all the activities. All the activities to be done. Holy crap. Have you been up to anything this week, Tom? Have you been to Canada? I have been working. Oh. Like, every day. It's just been yesterday and today are the only days since we last recorded that I haven't worked. Man, that is awful. That is uh, really Well, bad. I made 300 quid, so... What the bad. fuck? I want 300 quid. <laughs> Get a job, nerd. I've been trying. Um, I did actually work one day. You know the corner shop near me? Uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, one yeah, of yeah. their people were on holiday, and the guy in it, Tony, he was just like, "Do you wanna, do you wanna do an eight-hour shift for for some money?" And I was how, like, "How much did you get?" Yep, fifty squids. Fifty pounds for yeah. eight hours. Yeah. But then what I, was your pay? I did some arrangement, arranging for his sax quartet, and I got an extra thirty for that as well. So. Oh nice. You know, um, oh yeah. You should plug yourself. You should be like, hey, if anybody wants oh, any yeah. sax arranging. <laughs> Anyone wants anything <laughs> doing, anything musical, please message me. If you want anything doing, anything. message James. Just there you go. anything. <laughs> anything. He will do anything. The man has no morals. <laughs> or dignity. <laughs> that, that, those all went a very long time ago. The Holy crap. Um, I've done nothing this week apart from that, I don't think. No, I haven't done a lot. Uh, maybe we should do like another theoretical question. Yeah. 
Uh, I need. Do you have one? I, mine was last time. Oh great! Just drop me in it. No, I don't. Yeah. I'm really bad at theoretical questions. I might have written one down somewhere in the book. Um, yeah. This is a great start. Just like dumb ones. Come on. I can't think dumb of question. any. I'm you panicking. Can. You can do it. I believe in you. If you were to be an instrument, which instrument? Oh my would god, you... that's so bad. <laughs> That's so bad. I would be... Okay. He's answering it, though. <laughs> Holy shit. What instrument would I be? Like, and you felt what the instrument feels. Hmm. So well, like... I don't think I'd like to be a wind instrument. Yeah. Well, if you're like... Because I don't want anybody's lips on me. No. That would be, like, slimy and gross, and people's mouths smell. Yeah. So I'd probably prefer to be a string instrument. But I don't really like string instruments. But then when your string snaps, you do be gonna really go painful. With a, I'm going to go with a cello. A cello. Because I think I'm I'm quite mellow, but also relatively tall. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm you're not quite super tall. tall, but I'm like I mean, slightly above average. So I'm not a double bass. No. Or well, definitely not a contra bass. No, definitely not. No. I reckon I would be... <laughs> The drums, because the drums. everyone bangs me all the time. <laughs> God damn it. That wasn't actually my answer. I don't know what I'd be. I don't want to be like a clarinet, because I'd just be taken apart every two seconds, and it'd just be painful being ripped apart. If my, I'd, I'd be the voice. I'd be a voice. Well... Speaking about using the voice as an instrument, whoa! <laughs> let's go into <laughs> our conversation oh God. of "In a Dream" by by Gretchen by Gretchen, Gretchen Pal Palato <clears throat> Pal Palato Gretchen Palato Palato Gretchen Pilates. Okay, so... Gretchen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't choose the album. It was my my significant other. My girlfriend, Jessica, who chose the album. I don't believe you. I know. I, <laughs> I don't believe you. You know that, what? That I'm going to send you screenshots of her messaging me telling me to choose the album. I don't album. believe that she's real, James. Oh. <laughs> Shit. Do I lie? <laughs> I mean, you, you finally caught on. It's taken you a year and seven months. Um, yeah, I didn't choose the album. She chose it. She promised me it would be jazz. Um, and it was yeah it was so she did good so my quota of one jazz album every (laughs) two times I choose is good so far Um, just a little bit of background information about the album real quick I didn't get the full lineup because I didn't really know anyone in there Um, I can tell you the lineup lineup. have you I I know like the because there's a bit of a link, isn't there? There's a link back to our first episode. There is there is a big link back to our first episode, <laughs> which is good. But, um, so Gretchen Parlato, she sings. She's a singer. She was the first ever um, admitted student to some American jazz vocal school. She was the first ever female to be admitted to that school. I can't remember the name of the school. That's mad. Some prestigious jazz school. Was it Berkeley? She's the first female. I don't think I so. I don't think it'd be Berkeley either. Um, yeah, she. I think, looking back, she's done quite a few albums, but I've never heard of her, which I'm a bit worried about, because maybe I'm not so hot in my jazz scene after all. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's a keys player in there called Aaron Parks. I absolutely love him. I've liked him for a while. I've played some of his stuff. He's really good. The guitar player, whose name I've forgotten, because I looked at Lionel... Line it's Lionel Luez. Lueke. L- yeah, he's he was L O U E K A K E. He's uh he's African, I think. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, there's a bass player who Tom's gonna tell us the name of. Um, oh, it's just gone. Um, oh, see you later. The yeah, the guitar player was really good though. I was surprised by him. The guitar guy was Lionel Lueke. Yep. Uh, the bass. I don't know if it was Kendrick Scott or Derek Hodge, but it was one of the two. Oh dear. 
Um, uh, and then obviously Gretchen was singing, and I assume the other one of the two was on drums. percussion. Yeah. So it's yeah, a, a bit of a hefty rhythm section, really, a four four man rhythm section. But it it it's, yeah, it suited it nicely. Um, should we move into our our song by song? The track by track. I'll just quickly say before we do, Kendrick Scott was the drummer and Derek Hodge was the bassist. Yeah, nice. There you go. Holy shit. Okay, I can't help it. What can't you help, James? I just can't help it. I can't help getting all my jazz facts wrong <laughs> in important situations. Uh, yeah, so it like it started off, and I was going into it obviously completely blind. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if if your girlfriend had told you anything no. about it, no. but just going into it, and it starts off with some dude just like... <laughs> it was brilliant. I loved it, and the like string doing the same thing as well. Yeah. I was like, "This is great." Um, and then her singing. I I I think just her. I don't know if it's a specific jazz style or if it's her style, but I found the singing just throughout the whole album. I'm just going to mention it now because it's the first song. It was just a little bit too breathy, mm. and it, it felt like she was singing it. But like there was somebody asleep in the next room and she didn't really want to wake them up. So she was only kind of giving it half half of it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that was a stylistic choice for this album specifically or is just the way that she sings or is a jazz thing. I don't know. But I wasn't a massive fan. That being said, her singing was quite good. It just I felt like the whole time it was missing the actual voice part it felt like i was just getting the breath yeah um so yeah i had something to say about singing as well the i don't know if it is a style specifically but i had only heard this style of singing really before in a very similar album um by uh of a french woman called cyril ami and she did an album with a guitar player called diego Figuerdo, Figuerdo, something like that. He's Spanish. He looks really happy all the time. And they did an album together, and she sings in almost exactly the same way. Um, I right. think Cyril has been around just a bit longer than uh, than Gretchen. Gretchen. So I don't know whether whether this whole album, because the guitar is, the, the, I mean, they're nowhere near the same album at all, but it, they kind of are similar mainly because mm-hmm. of the singing so i can't tell whether gretchen's heard cyril and then tried copying it or 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 she is it's just a it is a wider known jazz singing style i could because all the other jazz singers like ella fitzgerald and nina simone all those sorts of people they've never really sung like this before this is no it's... like i mean i like i like uh ella fitzgerald yeah i like her, her a lot and she has got a very powerful well yeah it's a very soulful voice definitely and i that was kind of what i was expecting when i saw on spotify like jazz vocalist jazz singer mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and then it was this but i mean it wasn't unpleasant it just isn't quite my style yeah yeah um but the tune itself um there's no there's not much to say about this song for me really it no it was a really originally a stevie wonder tune i don't know if you've heard it all right um but it's just it's a Latin feel here, and that's all there is to say about it. Right. I think. Well, that's been said. They're done <laughs> within me. Within me, uh, I like this one. I wrote that this one sounded like a kind of film noir, mm-hmm. sultry kind of underground jazz club speakeasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that it, it the, the the shot would open. With like her singing into like holding the microphone and singing and like giving a little bit of a wiggle and then there'd be all the like dudes in the back with their sunglasses playing on the instruments. <laughs> but then the camera would like pan over to the door as the detective comes in and the scene would continue and it would just be the background music. Yeah. That was exactly what was in my head for this. Yeah, I I I, I do agree. <laughs> it was it sounded mysterious. Um the song itself yeah. was just a ballad. Uh it it was a cover. It's a song by a guy called Francis Jacob, who I'm not f- too familiar with. Um, right. Uh, yeah, that's it. The 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 drum the drums on this track were particularly solid. I really like the rhythm they're laying down. I like the whole feel. Well, I found them particularly thing. annoying. Really. It felt like it was just that. Psh, 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 psh. 
all the way through and you might have to do a bit of editing with that because that might be a bit harsh on people <laughs> listening but um it, I, I it was just it felt too just every beat yeah well i think one of the and it was all the way through yeah i can see your argument there but the one of the main kind of the whole appeals of jazz is that it it's so rhythmically diverse like at somewhere some points what maybe what you're even subconsciously expecting is kind of different rhythms and not just on the beat more syncopation and uh and and completely off the beat or or triplets or there is no beat so when you do hear a more of a solid beat i think it subverts ex- expectations i think yeah if that makes sense yeah i can see what you mean uh i just feel like there's an easier way yeah. of getting a more solid regular yeah. beat yeah than that which d- it seemed to kind of take over a little bit in a way it was yeah. almost all i could hear that's understandable uh, uh this one i I was just listening to it through my phone and I went and I got headphones to put on on this one. Mm -hmm. Once I'd put in my headphones, it kind of, it sounded a bit less, it sounded more full and the breathiness of her voice didn't seem as apparent Yeah. once I was listening to it through headphones. So it might, my initial dislike could have just been phone speakers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Um, It did have a fade out though, Tom. I didn't notice. It had a fade out. I'm sorry. I must buddy. be losing my touch. That's oh. not great. You're gonna have to change your rankings now. Uh, I might actually. Do you know what I saw? Oh uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm really not. Oh, uh, okay, I didn't right. Like that. I really didn't like that uh, percussive repetition. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what I saw in the park the other day, Tom? What did you see in the park? It was a butterfly, mate. You saw a butterfly? I saw... Well, that's a coincidence, because this next song's called Butterfly. Oh my god, and Tom, who, who's this song written by? <laughs> who is it originally written by? I'm going to guess at Herbie Hancock. Oh my god, it was. What a Herbie is Hancock that the link? tune. I actually had a different link. Did you? No. Yeah, you know uh, Lionel Loeke? Yeah. He used to play with Herbie Hancock. Really? Well, yeah. Maybe, well, he's not on him then, then, I just don't know him. How embarrassing. Yeah, but Butterfly was written by Herbie Hancock. Um, that's that's great. It's a really nice tune. I I I mean, this... what was with the baby? Yeah, this I I don't I'm not a big fan of this version because the baby, who, who was it? Where did <laughs> who it come the baby? from? <laughs> I don't... So my first thought was that I didn't think this one was going to have any lyrics, and I thought that you'd have you'd have the baby kind of doing that almost sounded a little bit like a really very rudimentary bad jazz scat yeah and then you'd have her doing her quite good enjoyable yeah. jazz scat yeah and it would be like a butterfly hatching out of the oh. chrysalis but then it did have words and it wasn't her song so i was yeah. like well it, it's not that yeah 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 it's just i yeah it's very there was strange. a bit though where she was going like ooh, 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 and then she did like Ooh, ooh, ooh. and it was like a little key change and I was like Whoa. that was a good one <laughs> that one got me what a good I, the, the, some of the vocalising did kind of give off a bit of a headhunter feel but I actually I really liked the, the vocalising in this album and I yeah. didn't enjoy it in Headhunters and I think it might be because um, it's a female it's a, it's a woman doing it Yeah. so it, it's a little bit more it's a little bit Mel- softer yeah a bit more melodic whereas in Herbie Hancock in, in Headhunters it was quite harsh yeah and it's almost a bit more tribal in a way maybe it scared me like, <laughs> deep down <laughs> the tribe scared you <laughs> um but yeah yeah but it, yeah this was not my favorite tune not not by a long shot it... I actually did I enjoyed this quite a lot I've written I mean, it's not it's not my favourite. It's a middle one. Mm-hmm. But I did enjoy it a lot more than I thought, considering, yeah. as far as I could tell, this one was just her voice, the guy's like beatboxy voice, yeah. and Lionel on the guitar. That there was. I didn't think there was anything else yeah. playing. Yeah, I think you're right. And it still sounded quite full. It didn't sound like stripped mm-hmm. down. And I thought it was quite impressive. I think that I've written that it's a good showcase of using the voice as an instrument mm-hmm. rather than just a method of delivering lyrics yeah. and delivering emotion it was actually musically playing a part yeah 
whereas typically in in any of the music I listen to and I do enjoy it often the voice is just used as a kind of emotional delivery system Mm -hmm. yeah okay I I like that I like your so I did I liked it yeah yeah Um, in a dream in a dream so this one I was like oh is it alternating between a kind of scatty yeah one and then like a nice jazz club like yeah yeah one and i think it did pretty much yeah. all the way through do that kind of alternating i think you're right. uh, and i quite liked that because i think if it had just been the scat then i would have been i would have gotten bored of it and i wouldn't have enjoyed the later one yeah. yeah because it's not interesting enough in a way to listen to a whole yeah. album of it but with the alternation it i thought it worked quite well and it meant neither style got too tired mm-hmm. yeah um in a dream this is my favorite at one point it wasn't at the end but it, it was... was it was my favorite until the next song oh holy shit but yeah i did enjoy this one a lot as as it was played yeah um so it's by robert glasper he's a jazz pianist um right he's a very famous jazz pianist and he's a very good jazz pianist um okay and the the I, I think the harmony that Glasper put in there originally will have been changed up quite a lot by Aaron Parks on keys and the LL on guitar, I've forgotten his name, double L. Lionel Loeke. Loeke, yeah. And I think it suited it nicely. It suited the feel nicely. It suited the voice nicely. Um, and there was a bit where the guitar and the voice were playing together like the same yes. uh, melody. And that was really yeah. nice. I don't think we see that enough we kind of just see the guitar and the rhythm section as they as did a, a similar thing backing. in another song i've forgotten which one with the voice and the and the and the piano yeah yeah which is good because it's nice to do those sort of duet things when you're either i've kind of got a question solo. about that yeah so they were playing uh, i mean playing it was a voice so it wasn't really mm. playing but they were playing in unison yeah so it can't be improvised, right? If they're playing in you, if it's in you. Yeah. The so so is, is this rehearsed? Yeah, they'll have rehearsed these. These are quite rehearsed tunes. I think they're not just getting right. a rhythm section together and having a jam. But I think the way those bits would have come out of it, like the way this album would have come together, it's not like sitting down. It's and not like she writing. wrote out all the parts. No, they'll have just started by having right. a jam. And then they would be like, oh, we could do this. And then like, oh, if we put and we voices put those in bits here. Together. Yeah. And then right. Lauren Luenko, whatever his name, he can he'd play Lionel. a bit on guitar. And then he'd be like, oh, the voice would be like, oh, join in with that. That'd be nice as a way to lead out of the solos and instead. And they kind of form it from that. So it did start off improvised, but it's not improvised, right. if that makes uh, sense. I don't think. Yeah. I think that's how they will have done it. Hmm. So, I mean, on Spotify, she's got a second album, which is live at NYC, which I assume will just be a live recording album. Of yeah. If I listen to, I think Butterfly was on there. Yeah. Do you think it would be the, like like the same? It depends on the lineup. Um, yeah, because it probably wouldn't be with Lionel or AK and Aaron Davis, yeah. or whatever his name was, yeah. all of them together. It would be yeah. a different kind of band that she goes tours with. Unless it is the same band, because which it could well be, yeah. but I think from from what I was reading on Spotify, it it was more it is more a kind of one off, yeah, like collaboration. Yeah. it's not. She just it's just her name on it, mm-hmm. but it's not. Her well, it's group. probably more likely then for you to see if when she does later albums, if she does like Butterfly or In a Dream again, to see similar things come back, right? Um, okay. Because she'll be like, oh, I did this with um, Aaron Parks and. Yeah, Lionel Luenke this thing. and then they kind of form it from that so it'd still be similar but not exactly the same I don't think okay holy cow uh, draw a lease this is my fave oh. oh dear I really liked this one I liked the lyricism of it yeah uh, and there was I don't know if it was all the way through or just for the majority of it there was like no instrumental at all mm-hmm. yeah it was just vocal was just vocal. I thought it worked really, really well. I don't know what language she's singing either. I assume it's some kind of Latin American yeah, I'm, language. I, she's from California. Yeah. So, I'm Mexican or, or Brazilian or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's it's Spanish. 
Um, uh, this tune, I think, was done by... Uh, it was more famously done by Stan Getz, a famous tenor sax, a really famous tenor sax player. Um, so when I he- ever hear this tune done by anyone else, I hope it's the same tune now. Um, I think it is. It's I always think of the Stan Getz version. And this just didn't hold up for me. This was my least favourite in the whole album because I just... It felt empty. There was the there wasn't really anything for, that I was overly impressed by. I mean, the vocals I really are good. Didn't, I really didn't think it did feel empty. Like I like I was I'm, I was very impressed throughout all of the kind of vocally ones how full they did make it sound. Yeah. Considering there wasn't a lot playing or a lot going on. No, no, I just I thought it was just lacking something maybe it was maybe i'm too getting getting too caught yeah caught up with historics and harmony and yeah but i don't hate it not by a long shot (laughs) i like the tune a lot but i it's not my favorite on the album at all fair enough holy cow turning turning into blue yeah (laughs) it's a weird name if you could become any colour, what would it be? Like a bright, vibrant shade, and you're that shade your whole body. Um, I feel like green would be really cool. Like Gamora? Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 Green's pretty cool, and I might go with purple. Yeah, purple would be cool. I wouldn't go yellow because everyone would just be like, oh, lol, you're a Simpson, but you don't want to be a Simpson. Yeah, it'd be right annoying. But I, w- I, I do like yellow. Or the thing you've got jaundice. Oh my god, like a really, really <laughs> bad case of jaundice. Or, or, or I guess like cyan, like a turquoise. You like mean a... you would be turning into blue? Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you think of turning into blue? I like the jazz piano in this. That was my first, yes. my first bullet point. Oh, I'm glad. Holy shit. And then my third bullet point was it didn't do anything particularly stand out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When when listening to the when listening to it, it was. I mean, I enjoyed it and I did like the jazz piano, mm-hmm. but it just it didn't. The 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 track as a whole didn't stand out to me. Okay, I disagree. This one stood out to me quite a lot, but I think it's because because I looked at the lineup first and I know Aaron Parks on piano, so I was like, oh, I'll listen to what he does because I like his stuff. Um, so I, the whole way through, this for me was just a massive piano fest. I could I felt that Aaron had a lot of um, he like he was putting his own style into it as much as he could. I feel like this was his piece. He had a nice piano intro, which was solid. It was really nice. His comping, like his chords, his voicings, they were all really nice. Some of them simple, but they all fit so nicely all the way through and they fit the style of song. And then you get to his piano solo and he just blows it out the fucking park. It was, it's an absolutely amazing solo. And the thing is, the thing is, it, it gets worse because the next track, his solo is even better. But the whole, all the way through, he was just solid oh. through this track. I, I this one I really liked a lot. Fair enough. I mean, I, the only other thing that I noted was more an album observation that occurred during this song. Yeah. Than anything to do with the song, and I wrote that, despite the fact that they're all quite sim, like like they're all similar, and and you can tell they're all the same style and art and artist and group. Mm. Each song had a very unique sound to it. Yeah. Like each track. Yeah. I don't know how... And I enjoyed I enjoyed that. Yeah. I don't really know why. It's not something that I can put my finger on. Mm-hmm. But, like... Because even though it does... You know, I Can't Help It and Butterfly and then Dora Lease were all kind of the more vocally scatty ones. Yeah. But they didn't all sound like the same track. Mm-hmm. And then the same with... Um, within me and in a dream they were both that kind of jazz club uh you know singing in a in a in a film yeah but but again they felt very different to each other which is good yeah yeah it's good i like it uh esp 
I didn't like it. Okay. This is my least favourite. Whoa. And I don't really know why. The baby comes back. That's why. The baby came back. <laughs> baby come back. Uh, just get rid of the baby. <laughs> Bin that I just, baby. I just don't understand what it was doing. I just, yeah, it, I, was it her? I, could... I don't even know. What, who is this baby? My thought during this was... <laughs> why are you in my ears? <laughs> Can someone get this baby out my ears? <laughs> <laughs> my original, my thought during this was that they'd recorded the tunes, played it to a baby, then the baby has sung what he thought was. Yeah, I don't really know. And then they recorded it again. Mm. And it almost did sound like they were going to almost use that recording of the baby as, as yeah, the as a sample, the track, or which something. would have been quite cool. Yeah. I mean, it, I might not have liked it, but it would have been quite cool. But then it just went yeah, it for like, the first 20 seconds. It just, they just turn it off. It was very strange. The very... It was re- I just don't know why it was there. What is ESP? What does oh, it stand for? Oh, right. ESP is a tune by Wayne Shorter, who's a very famous tennis sax player. I don't know. But what does it I've got no for? clue, and I'm desperately looking for my phone so I can Google it. I want you to tell me. ESP. I don't care if it's right or not. Oh, what does it stand electoral for? standard president. <laughs> well, that was the most boring <laughs> three words you could have possibly come up with. Exciting surprise. Penis. <laughs> oh, James. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're go- I'm, I'm going to be in the Oh, they're going to hate me. We're all disappointed I'm, in you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're all, and, and, and my girlfriend's going to be in the car as well. Oh, that makes it so much more awkward. We're all disappointed in you, James. I want you to know. I am very sorry. That we're all listening to you. I still can't find what Wayne Shorter means by ESP. Oh, well. Oh, it was a Miles Davis album as well. Oh, my God. Wow. I'm learning so much today about jazz that I should know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. Fair enough. Um, as you As you yeah. I have mixed feelings about Azure. Mm-hmm. Go on. It was very chill and like quite relaxing. And I liked the, 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 the vocal track, I guess, the vocal line through it. Mm-hmm. But um, I, it seemed to go on for a really long time. And I don't know if this is just because it sounded very similar to On the Other Side, which is the next track. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of. Like, I know, I know. Obviously, I know when the track changed, but mm. like they just kind of blended together in my head, maybe. Yeah. But uh, it just seemed to go on a bit, even though it is actually the same length. It's that kind of five minutes ish. Yeah, uh, I really liked it. I think it's because uh, there was a bass solo, and bass solos <laughs> are quite boring. <laughs> so it just feels like it goes on for a bit. Maybe. But I don't. I don't mean that. I like bass solos. Um, I do. Bass solos are boring, and if you play bass, you're boring. Holy shit! Can someone, <laughs> can someone calm this guy down? Um, uh, yeah. Have you heard of a keys? You're a boring individual, and you're not invited to my party. Whoa! I'm not invited to the party. <laughs> this do you play bass? No. <laughs> oh, you can I play a bass clarinet. It's a bass-free zone. Yeah. Where do you stop? With oh the no, bass? you're out. What? That's not allowed. You're not allowed. It's a bass. What about bass saxophone? Does that count? Is no. that allowed? Nothing bass. No. Do you know what we won't be eating? A, but bass, bass, bass fish, bass fish, yeah. bass. <laughs> bass. <laughs> bass fish. Yeah, bass. No bass. No sea bass. Oh, I love sea bass. Right. Stop no. distracting me. <laughs> not in my party, sunshine. Um. Do you know who Duke Ellington is? Who who is Duke Ellington? Yeah. The ghost of Duke Ellington is a character in the Netflix TV show Big Mouth. I hate myself that I knew that before you even said that, but that's exactly who Duke Ellington is. He's, yeah, he, he's like some jazz guy. Yeah, he's a jazz keys player. And that's, it's really weird that he's in that show because it makes no sense at all. Um, <laughs> None of that show makes sense. It's no. Uh, yeah, but this is a Duke Ellington tune, so it was supposed to be like a, a swung kind of thing. It's, it's a standard. Right. This is kind of like a standard. This is a standard. Yeah, I mean, a few of these have been standards that we've gone through, but um, but this is probably the one, one of the big one, one of the bigger ones. 
Um, so the chords were nice, the harmony was nice, the the head was sung really nicely by Gretchen. Gretchen, if you're listening, that was great. Loved it. Well done, Gretchen. We're big fans. Ten out of ten. <laughs> um, the guitar was nice. The guitar was really nice. Um, and the bass solo was good for bass solo, but for a solo, uh, yeah, it was okay. Um, it was just a bit boring. Yeah. I'm sorry, who was playing the bass? Oh, uh, not Kendrick, not Kendrick Scott. It was the other one. Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> no, great bass I can't. Um, it's, it's gone again. Uh, the bass was Derek Hodge. Okay, Derek, I just, you know, don't beat yourself up about it. It was a good solo. Just learn a different instrument. <laughs> You're a boring individual. <laughs> On the other side. Yeah, that was the next song. <laughs> Um, I really I've got two things written. Yeah, one is very similar to Azure, yep. and the other is it had a nice ending that glided to a close. Oh, there you go. Literally, I don't think I could add to that. It was yeah, it was just nice. Nice, no, yeah. Could tune all the way through. Nice upbeat feel. Uh, week. This is the last. Oh, song. I liked this one. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't my fave, but uh. I've I've started with ooh yeah enjoyed the intro ooh, finishing yeah. strong, that's my first bullet point. Man, I love it. I thought that the drum worked really really well in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I didn't like it in within me, but in this one, yeah, like, it worked. It, it was really quite groovy. The drum, yeah, it added that swing. Mm-hmm. I, I've written I'm missing the scatting though. There hadn't been any for a while. Yeah, the last vocally. the last three were didn't involve we're any We're all at just all. yeah. It's weird. But I did like it. And then the baby came back. <laughs> but it was so weird because the song like finished and there was silence and then it just kind of went like <laughs> and then it ended. Well, wow. Yeah, the... but I liked the piano again. Yeah. The piano was good. Aaron Parks, if you're listening, great job on the keys. Great Absolutely job. It. it was great job. fantastic. Well done. Give you Don't st- play bass. Do yourself a cookie. You know what? You can do the bass parts. Yeah. The, the... No. I want him to come to my party. If he picks oh. up the bass, he's not invited. <laughs> no, I went on piano. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was a good tune. It wasn't weak. It was a good tune. It was a really nice tune. Yeah, it was a good tune. Really nice so, piece of music. So, I think we'll probably have quite a different order. Yeah, I've got my girlfriend's as well. Oh, good. Because. She wanted to put her ordering because I told her that your girlfriend got to that, do an order, yeah. and she was like, "I want to do an order." <laughs> okay, uh, well you go, then tell us your girlfriends, and then I'll do mine. Yeah, nice. And then you can tell us your girlfriends, and we'll just keep spreading out the ranks. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'll go one turning into blue, right? Two in a dream, then azure, then on the other side, then weak. Then within, then ESP, then I can't help it, then butterfly, and then Dora Lease. Very different. Yeah. We had one the same though. Is it a middle ground but one? Go on. Anyway. Uh, no. My go on. girlfriend, she did turning in the blue, turning into blue, turning in the blue, turning into blue as number one. Turning into blue. <laughs> can't help it to three Dora Lease, four Azure. Five within, six week, seven in a dream, eight butterfly, nine ESP, and ten on the other side. Huh. Yeah. That's quite different again. Yeah. And then it's different to mine as well, which goes Dora Lease, mm-hmm. in a dream, oh. I can't help it. Yeah. Weak, butterfly, turning into blue, azure, on the other side, within me, then ESP. Wow. I have three very different rankings. Very interesting. What would if we if we ha- if you had to, but you don't. But if you had to, what score would you give the album? Um, but I like it as an album, and I like its style like a lot. Like I don't dislike any of the songs at all. They're all songs that I would gladly listen to over and over mm-hmm. again. So I'd give it quite a, a strong score. Um. Yeah, it's maybe like an 8.5, maybe a 9, maybe even a 9. Interesting. Why, what would you give it? I mean, I wouldn't give it 
that great a ranking and a score to be honest because it's just not really my style of music. yeah i mean i enjoyed it well enough um and the work i did like dora lisa a lot mm-hmm. but um just on the whole i wouldn't really put the album on ever yeah so out so of for the... me it would just get a kind of six okay yeah so out of the three jazz albums you've listened to so far, The Headhunter... Which have been Headhunters... Cannonball Takes Charge. Cannonball Takes Charge, and this one. Yeah. This one was my favourite. I don't think it's got the highest score. Really? Uh, because we did score the other two, but this yeah. one was my favourite, yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. It goes this one, then Cannonball. Yeah. Then Headhunters. So we're getting, I didn't enjoy Headhunters. We're getting better each time. Holy cow. Yeah. Should we move on, on to the film? Let's move on to the film. So the film was called Cidade de Deus uh, which in English means City of Gods and that was a re- hello uh, sorry I was drinking I was just having some oh, right. water okay okay sorry I, I like I heard you, you must have muted your mic yeah I did I heard that kind of background static just stop no, I'm I sorry. thought you died no um, I'm good it was drinking. recommended to me by a friend of mine uh, on on Facebook he was like oh guys I want you to on the podcast do, do. I'll, I'll let me find his message because I think he said do a kind of more an arty one, but he recommended this Citadel de Deus. Um, yeah, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I enjoyed it, but I kept finding myself kind of drifting off and wanting to do other stuff. But I really liked Did it. Did you really? Yeah. Huh. But I really liked it at the same time. I don't know what it was. I must just not have been in the right mood to watch it. I just kept drifting off and uh, struggling to watch it a bit. But I went. I found it really really gripping. I found it really, really gripping. Mm -hmm. I was like completely invested all the way through. Uh, He just recommended it because he wanted to see us do a foreign film. Okay, we've done Uh, it. But we've done it now. I I really enjoyed it. So I, I. I did have issues with it though Mm -hmm. and my main issues were to do with the cinematography of it the actual camera work itself I thought that the the story that it wanted to tell that kind of story about really it was about life in the favela and and gangs in the favelas the slums of of Brazil yeah Um, because I think the city of God the city of God is the name of a slum just outside Rio I believe mm-hmm. a real it's a real slum, uh, and, and then the gangs, the two gangs, kind of Lil Z and Benny's gang, yeah. and then Knockout Ned and Carrot's gang are real gangs. They're all real people, that... uh, and and the and the conflict between them is real. I think that I don't think Rocket's character is a real person. He was just a storytelling device. He's the storytelling device. Yeah, uh, but that that the. If, if the, the story that the film was trying to show was more of a slice of life, I guess, of in the favela, yeah. and I thought it told that excellently. I thought that those kind of interweaving but disjointed stories and doing it in the little individual ways yeah. worked really well. It scared me, I'm not going to lie. It was, I felt, at times I felt really bad. I was like, I'm watching this film so that I could talk about it on my podcast yeah. with my friend. yeah. Uh, and there are people in Brazil like, experiencing kids that who are being shot. That that I hated that. The, it made uh, me feel guilty. Yeah. For 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 living in England in a way. Yeah. Um. But not like that. I don't think that was the film's intention. Was to be like, look how awful their li- lives are, and look how great your life is. No. It's just this is this is life in favelas. Yeah. Um. I thought it did that really well. However, did you not think that at times? It was very Jason Bourne esque in the camera. It did a lot of that shaky cam. I don't think I've ever seen a quick, Jason Bourne film ever. Speedy cuts. But well, the, the, yeah, because it's two thousand two. It. This film came out, which is the same year that Bourne Identity came out. Yeah. Um, so it probably isn't actually inspired by Jason Bourne. But to my knowledge, Bourne was the first film to do well that kind of quick cut fight scene. It's been yeah. in a lot of films since. Where it's like bam, 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 and there's cuts all the time. 
Maybe uh, maybe that's why people. And this film used that a lot, but it didn't in in, in Born and in other films. It's used to create a sense of chaos, uh, where even the people involved can't follow what's going on, and it's all instinctual and reacting. Yeah. But when it was used in this, it just that effect wasn't required and it wasn't needed. I actually felt it really detracted from a lot of the shots. Mm. A lot of the time, I was I couldn't tell what was going on because it was just flicking through cuts There's and shots. A, are you thinking of a bit um, at Benny's goodbye party where it all kicks off? Okay, fight I'm actually not. Okay. I thought that was the only spot at yeah, which okay, that's fine. the quick cuts was done super, super yeah, well. Yeah, I was just about to defend it, that's all. Whew, yeah. That's okay. But specifically the chicken fight at the beginning and then at the end. Yeah. Was the really worst offender because that's what you come into as, and I'm like, what the hell is this film? This is a Jason Bourne fight scene, but yeah. it's a bunch of kids with guns chasing the chicken. And obviously, by the end of the film, it kind of made sense when you yeah. got the back story, but still, the way that it was filmed, man, I, d- I just don't think it was right. I don't think it was the right choice to film it that way. Some strange, uh, and then also because it it started with this kind of chase of a chicken and then rocket being caught between the gang and the police yeah. and the camera like whips round him a 360 spin round him and it spins into going round him like 30 years ago mm. as a kid in the 60s yeah on, on a football pitch and that's a re- it was a really cool transition i thought that it was pulled off really well and the effect was really cool yeah it just felt a bit out of place though this isn't you know it wasn't a spy film it wasn't a fancy yeah fighty film yeah, I the can. Transitions. I can, I can understand that. I I enjoyed it though. I kind of. I did enjoy it. Um, yeah, I did lose track of the characters at the start. I was so confused. That might be to do if if you were kind of drifting off and not. Yeah, it was. And I I also, think... I think watching a subtitled film, it's yeah. harder to remember the characters. Yeah. Because when it's when it's a. F- film in your language you're kind of remembering people's voices and the way that mm-hmm. they speak and you can get it that way but with this yeah. it's just the faces that you have to remember yeah and it's difficult especially when all the people are of a different nationality to you mm. it's it's more different more difficult because you know there's we don't mix with an awful lot of uh kind of southern southern american no people and you know it's facial features and stuff that aren't super familiar to us Mm -hmm. there there was one facial feature that was though when before little z became little z and he was little dice he looked so much like miles davis it was unbelievable (laughs) i was oh it was just he would look like 40 and he was like two years old it's mad the whole film it, it it shook me quite a bit i was i was shocked I was really shocked. And I didn't expect it to be a true story. Like, I knew there were slums in Brazil and stuff, and I knew that there were gangs and violence. But, like, holy crap. It's just... It was really awful. All-out gang warfare. It's when he started going absolutely crazy. When it was, like, revealed... Just a lawlessness yeah. of it all. Like, kids running around with guns, and then kids getting shot, and then telling a kid and to kill another no kid. And cons- just no... Yeah, I mean, not no consequences. That's the wrong term because that was the whole point. Is that you know it does catch up to you, and for so many of these people, their lives will just end shot in a gutter somewhere. Yeah. Like that was the whole point. But I don't know. Like it's, if somebody started running around in in here in like in this in our town, mm-hmm. trying to start a gang war and shooting everyone, you know, they wouldn't last a week. No. But, like, these gangs went on for, there, for be a, the, years and years. And that it was just an accepted way yeah. of life. Yeah. It is unbelievable. It it was a dark film. It was dark a lot of the time. It was really depressing. Mm. But And then and the way that it corrupted everyone, like, like Knockout Ned, mm. who started off as... It, kind of the, when it was on the bus, it was just and, a bus and he guy, was quite yeah. a wholesome. Uh, I mean, almost this film's Joe Gardry in a way, that yeah. kind of paragon of virtue. Yeah. Uh, and to to who he was at the end, where he was just shooting people, just taking down whoever he needed to take yeah. down. It that was tough. I like Knockout Ned's story. I like yeah, the me way too. Um, 
the way the film was in chapters, though. I really, really, I really liked that. that, and I liked that none of the chapters were about Rocket, but yeah. he linked them all. Yeah, which was good. So it made him the main character without him being a major part of any of the action. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. I liked Rocket's character as well. There I really liked Rocket's character. A few characters I really liked. I liked Little Z as a character. Because I liked Me his too. backstory. And I liked Benny, who was his buddy. I liked Benny. Benny was cool. Benny was, without doubt, the best character in there. Like, you can't... I could, you couldn't... You just couldn't help but like him. Yeah. Even though they were all awful people. Yeah. Apart I from Rocket, like really. He didn't do anything bad. Yeah. He just took Just took his photos. photos. Which is unbelievable. Uh, I, I, a couple of the things that I I mentioned uh, quite early on, I wrote down that all the characters felt very fleshed out and real, which is it's good writing, it's good writing skill, mm. but it was almost too real, where it felt yeah. like a lot of the dialogue and stuff, you felt like you were missing out on stuff and needed to know more. You didn't when you then finished the film and look at it as a whole. Mm. It told you everything that was important. But it felt the way through that you were missing out on stuff because you didn't know these characters' backstories enough. Yeah. So narratively, it was almost the characters were almost too real. Yeah. But then I actually did a bit of reading when it finished, and most of the actors in it, uh, most of the kind of actors of the f- people in the favelas, mm-hmm. were people from favelas and kids from like all the runt gang were just kids off the street. That's unbelievable. I starred in it, uh, and I mean. Like, I'm interested in if I didn't speak English and I watched an English film with kids in, because, I mean, child actors are notoriously quite bad. Yeah. And even even a good child actor is usually not that great. Yeah. Like, not amazing. Like, they're good. You can, they're, they're good. They're believable. But there's always, you're always like, they are just playing a character and that line was a bit wooden or something. Yeah. And... I thought that I, there was never a moment of a single character in this film no. where I didn't believe that that was just I was just watching the character. Yeah, I agree. I thought, and even even with the kids, like the li- really little kids in the gangs, and there are two reasons I think for that. One is possibly that it was in a different language, mm-hmm. so if they delivered a line a bit wooden, I wouldn't have known because I was reading all the lines anyway. Yeah. But then also, I mean, for, I guess if most of those kids were favela kids, they probably weren't doing an awful lot of acting. No. Yeah. It's crazy. It, I didn't know there the... were, like, actual kids from the slums. Yeah. That's... Mo- like, most of the people in that film had never acted before. Some of the adult characters, like adult uh, Rocket, I think, maybe. Yeah. And then, uh, like, the white characters, I think Carrot was, and the, the guy that played, like, the arms dealer and stuff like that yeah. they, they they all were actors like uh, Brazilian actors but so actors. Not, not people that are well known outside yeah. of Brazil but they were actors that have been seen in other stuff the guy playing uh, Knockout Ned apparently oh was quite is quite well known in Brazil so the whole like uh, they must have filmed it in a slum wasn't they in they filmed it in a favela but not in that one okay so it would be too. I, re, I was reading, in the, and it was too dangerous to film it in the city of God. Like they would have probably all been shot. That's unbelievable. That and I, the direct, actually... I, I can't remember his name, the director, but uh, I'm just googling it now. But I remember reading a quote from him, where he he said if he'd known how difficult it was going to be to film in a slum, like how dangerous, he never would have made the film. Holy! Like he, he said they were like. Shit. Because there would have been gangs in that slum as well, wouldn't there? Because it's not just the city of God that has uh, that has gangs. It'll be all the slums. Mhm. Yeah. That's scary. That's absolutely terrifying. Was he a Brazilian uh, director then? Yeah. Uh, so it's just like full name? Brazil. Fernando Meirelles. Okay. Co-directed by Katia Lund. Man. Uh, yeah, apparently the only member of the cast that has the the only professional actor with years of filming experience with was Mateus Nagtagail, who played Carrot. Okay. Wow. Uh, the director explained that the reason that amateur actors were used for two reasons. One is in 2002, um, there were no 
black actors available in Brazil. And a, a lot of the cast were black. Yeah. Uh, so he wanted, he didn't want middle class black people, which were the only black actors in Brazil. Yeah. To play here, the characters in this, he wanted it to be authentic. So they did a lot of it through that. And then the other, um, the other, re- yeah. So it was the lack of professional black actors and wanting it to be authentic. That's mad. I actually like got... apparently another bit of trivia that I read on IMDb. Yeah. You know, before the big gang war, mm-hmm. when they're all in that circle praying. Yeah. That was because one of the kids asked the director. He was like, "Are you going to show the praying?" And he was like, "What praying?" And they're like, "Before every conflict, we always prayed in the group." Oh whoa, that's mad. That's actually mad. Fuck. Why? Like, oh, I just can't get my head around it. Like, the... That is going like on, goes, like, right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just sat on my bed. It's crazy. Yeah. With a good headset, recording into like, my Like, I've been iPad. watching Doctor Who all week. Yeah. Like... <laughs> but, like, there are kids out there having to choose whether they get their hand or their foot shot off. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. It was a really good film for highlighting those details and I did enjoy it yeah I definitely would recommend it to like everyone you have to watch it's, it it's like a must watch yeah I'll definitely you know I mean? watch it again as well it's not the best film I've ever watched but it was eye opening and you it, know I don't know anything about life in, in, in Brazil I don't know all. anything about favela life or the gangs or anything yeah. so but yeah, yeah it really does open your eyes yeah it's unbelievable. Holy crap. Can you, the music was really good as well. Just like, it was really It started cool. off with like traditional Brazilian music and as it went through like the 60s and the 70s, it got, um, it was really, really nice. I thought James Brown played in that situation was a bit strange, but I quite, quite enjoyed it really. I thought Benny's Party was really, really cool. It's just such a crazy film. I really cannot understand it. The guy playing Knockout Ned mm-hmm. is a soul singer in Brazil, and one of his songs is on the soundtrack. Oh, that's mad. It's pretty cool. I'll have to look at the soundtrack. Holy crap. Should we move on to what we're choosing for next week and what... Uh, what, what, what score do you give this film? Oh, I gave it uh, an 8, I think. An 8? I gave it a 9. Yeah. yeah. Like 8.5, 9. Yeah, i maybe boost up to 8.5. I think because I gave the last one we watched an eight and a half. Um, that was like the Incredibles or something. Was it? What was the last one that we watched? I don't seeking, know, seeking a friend. Choice. Yeah, that one. Seeking a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're so different though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Which is, but I feel bad giving this a lesser score than that when this just yeah. is so powerful yeah. and so realistic. Yeah. Holy crap. Shall we move on to our choices? What, and what are we doing next week? What's our special going to be? Or are we going to surprise everyone? And we'll. Th- uh, well, I thought that we would um, rank everything. Yeah. So, are we choosing an album and a film for two weeks' time, or for next week? Uh, for next week. Uh, yeah, we're choosing an album and a film for next week because we'll just do it in that in the talking section. Okay. Yeah. It's not really a special. We'll rank everything. But... Yeah, I mean, it's just a different thing to do. And then, who's? How are we going to choose the TV series? A bit of a look back. Um, I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Oh <laughs> man, I love crossing bridges. So I'm on for album. Yeah, aren't I? yeah, yeah. You're on. So our next. album that we are going to listen to. Yeah. Is going to be Life in Cartoon Motion. Oh Amiga. man, what an album! Buzzing, buzzing. That's the one. That was the first ever album I owned on CD. Was it really? Yeah. Wow. There you go. I don't have it anymore. Oh no, I do. It's up there. I'll listen. It's on. It's on Spotify yeah. anyway. Nice. Um, the film that I guess suggest is a film called Stranger Than Fiction. Oh, it's a film I've seen a lot, but I kind of want to talk about it. I've never watched it, but I've heard of it. Oh, it's quite well known. 
Yeah, it's got Will Ferrell in and that other person. Is it Emma Thompson? I think it might have Emma Thompson in. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, that's quite exciting. Oh my god, I'm glad. Okay. Holy well shit. then. Is there anything you want to say before we finish off? No, but I'm good. <laughs> well, I'd like to say thanks for listening to World on a String. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook at WAS Podcast and also on iTunes. World on a String is hosted by James Kajemvan and Tom J. Kale. You can find me on Twitter at, at James Kajemvan. And you can find me at Ace Torterra 1. All music on the show is original music by James Kajemvan.